in previous videos, we've gone over a bunch of different types of wrist rules and then kind of some other things sprinkled um, throughout. At least that might be what chapter one has felt like to you. And I want to build on that idea and kind of make this as a finale, as like a capstone summary slash synthesis video of a lot of the things that we've learned in chapter one, specifically on wrist rules. Because so far, well, we've technically learned all that there is to wrist rules, not, not exactly, maybe. Um, what we've done is kind of limited to pre-prescribed patterns. Um, all right, so like with video 1.3, we did this, right? We did uh, sagittal figure eights. We also learned frontal plane figure eights. I'm going to be mirroring this video because it'll be a little more complex, so I'm sorry left-handed people, but I'm going to pretend everybody's right-handed and use my own left hand. But um, anyway, we've also gone over horizontals. Those I'm not going to go into as much today, actually really at all, because um, I'll have more like evolutions of those in the future. But what I want to do is not teach any new tricks per se in this video, but rather expand your mind and kind of broaden the horizons of what we can do with wrist rolls. So we know there's uh, front to back, right? Front grip into back. We know there's back to front. We know there's front to front. And we know there's back to back, right? We know those four wrist rolls and really those comprise pretty much everything we've done. We've just been altering what planes those wrist rolls are on. But if we think back to, let's start and go, let, yeah, let's go ahead and start with um, figure eights. Whether these are sagittal or frontal, um, it doesn't matter. What I'm going to show you will still help to broaden what you can do with them, okay? What we're going to be doing is, let me back up a bit. So if we deconstruct the, uh, I was debating doing that with my thumb down in the hand, but anyway, if we deconstruct the um, the figure eight wrist roll that we've already learned, we started slashing in an X, right? Whether it was in front of our body or off to the side, which I showed by just turning my body to the side, but still having the nunchucks appear to be in the same orientation. Um, we always started slashing. And if you take a second and think about this slash, can you think of another way to slash? It's not that hard, and I'm not talking about using the other hand. It's really simple to just change directions with the slash. Does that also mean we can change directions with the wrist roll? And the answer there is yes. This is an upwards, upwards figure eight wrist roll rather than downwards, downwards like we've done before. And maybe you couldn't exactly follow that with your eyes, or maybe you noticed something was different, but you didn't um, understand how to do it right away. These have slightly different aesthetic applications and appeals, and so I want you to be able to do the upwards version. So, naturally, we're going to start slashing. Doesn't matter whether you start slashing on same or opposite side. But we're going to do our first wrist roll um, for the sake of ease for right now. This is a simpler version. One time when we slash and we're at our opposite side hip, we're going to slash up to same side shoulder. And as we do that, first of all, go ahead and warm up your front to back wrist roll, right? Front grip, release, re-grab to back grip, right? Warm that up, maybe in front of your body first, and then turn to the side and follow along with me here, release, re-grab, right? Swing, wrap around, release, re-grab, right? So now we've got the front to back hopefully warmed up. Start at your opposite hip, so away from the camera, slash up the same side shoulder, and now use that momentum, right? This arc right here, this, as your swing for your front to back wrist roll, okay? So we're just slashing, and one time, after we come down to opposite hip, slash up and do a front to back wrist roll um, by same side shoulder, here, right? So slash, slash, same side shoulder, front to back. Now from there, we're going to continue and do a back to front on opposite side shoulder. And how we do that, um, this might feel a little bit weird getting into it. The wrist roll itself is much easier, maybe, than the front to back on the same side. Um, but how we get into this, for those of you who have like played Call of Duty or something, maybe you've like used a knife or something in those games, 
Um, kind of think of this as a, like a reverse, a back grip on a knife, except that you're slashing more so upwards instead of this horizontal uh, cross slash for somebody's throat, right? So we're holding the nunchucks in a back grip. Kind of think of this as the blade of a knife. Imagine that you're slashing up like this here at somebody, okay? That's kind of the, the mechanism to get into this wrist roll. And from there, if you have to, go ahead and warm up your back to front on this hand, right? Back to front, just in front of your body at first. Again, I'm in front of my body, my shoulders are square off. And then we can do the same thing, uh, but turned to which side? Okay, turned so that the nunchucks are being held same side, and the same side arm is away from the camera. But slash up to the shoulder that is closer to the camera, right, opposite side, and do your wrist roll there, okay? So back grip, hold down at opposite hip, slash up, sorry, same side hip, slash up to opposite side shoulder, and back to front wrist roll. Once you've done that a couple times, now we've done both sides of this really. Um, whether you want to start here and begin with the back to front wrist roll or start down at opposite side hip in a front grip and instead start with your same side uh, front to back wrist roll. Either one is fine because you can continue indefinitely from one into the other. So maybe start at opposite hip is easier. Slash up, 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 up. Same, opposite, same, opposite. When we come same, front to back, opposite, back to front. And try to keep that going as best as you can. You'll probably drop it a couple of times, but that's okay. Let me move so that I don't have this, yeah, that dark area of the ceiling covering me up uh, with the black nunchucks. Anyway, that is one alteration that you can do to the sagittal, um, oops, to the sagittal figure eight wrist rule, right? So instead of slashing down, 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 we can now slash up, 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 and still be wrist rolling out of this. Now, why might we want to do that? Sometimes, maybe you'll have a routine choreographed or something, and when you actually perform, you get all flustered and you mess something up, and maybe you meant to beat under, uh, maybe you meant to throw a beat over a shoulder and then come down with these wrist rolls and instead you accidentally somehow came under the shoulder but like maybe you're to music or maybe you need to wrap it up quickly and you don't have time to be like switching obviously just these kind of nothing movements without much aesthetic appeal so you want to use the beat that you just beat under your shoulder with and maybe you want to do a figure eight so then you just come into your upwards figure eight instead of from over the same shoulder downwards figure eight right so you can use um similar aesthetic but different mechanism tricks as fail safes in case you mess something up i wouldn't recommend that but if you have to do it um ideally you should be practicing whatever routine you have before you perform to the point where you don't have to ad lib things like that another thing you can use this for is this let's think back in time for a bit to when we learned our five basic shoulder passes and so we had some stuff we had some like interesting stuff here maybe and then we didn't really know a whole lot of other moves with the nunchucks until we learned well, i mean we did learn the back passes right but until we learned figure eight wrist roll right and then this was kind of our big move for a while and it's still a kind of flashy move right um but let's say that you want to change your entry into that figure eight because a lot of times people will be like switching around and then they're like i want to do my figure eight i want to get back to my dominant hand so they do whatever switches they have to do to get back to their dominant hand for you guys mostly that's your right and they come up right over over the shoulder and then come back down and into the figure eight and that has its own aesthetic right you can be coming up 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 and then back down right that has its own aesthetic but maybe you want to instead of like breaking the momentum and making a switch um maybe you want to just ride along with the momentum of this upwards um, shoulder pass and come straight into the figure eight and as you can see there i was always in some in one way or another kind of doing this x yes one x turns into a shoulder pass but the nunchucks are still swinging um backwards towards the back of my head as they're coming over the top right so you can use this technique like that if you would like to okay now if you think back to video 
right? We had our sagittal, a figure eight wrist roll, and then we moved on to the frontal plane version, which was the same thing except, right, turning to the side as we're slashing, and then we do the exact same thing. We can do the exact same thing now with our upwards slashes, instead of having this always be a sagittal plane technique, where if you want to get good dynamism on the, from the audience's perspective, you kind of have to turn to the side like this here, or maybe oblique at like a 45 degree angle or something, because this, you know, well, has its own aesthetic, but there you go. So let's turn this into a frontal plane technique. So continue doing your upwards, upwards, slashes, upwards, upwards, same, opposite. Slowly turn your body to the side, but have the nunchucks be more or less occupying the same um, uh, path in space, okay? So still have the nunchucks be doing what they were doing before, just your body is the only thing that's moving, okay? From there, just do exactly what we did before. So think of in front of your body, by your crotch, as your opposite hip. It's from this position that will come up um, into same side, what was before same side, right? Opposite hip to same side, front to back. For now, it's uh, crotch to scapula, front to back wrist roll, okay? So we're slashing up, up, crotch to scapula, front to back wrist roll. From there, from up here, uh, back over to this side, this is our back to front. It was, as we come back in front of our body, it's literally from your back to your front, it's a back to front wrist roll, if that helps you remember it. So back grip while behind you, back to front wrist roll to get in front of you. And then front to back, back to front, front to back, back to front. Redo your slashes if that didn't make sense and try to just connect one wrist roll into another. By this point, I think you're capable of pausing the video and figuring that one out without me having to over explain. But um, I did want you to follow along. So there you go. And then, right, this still looks sagittal. It's still along the audience's line of vision. Instead, now we can be doing this exact same thing, but now turn your body along with the nunchucks, right? Um, so that we have a frontal plane, upwards, upwards, figure eight, okay? And now, right, so we have upwards, upwards, figure eight, frontal plane, and we have the downwards, downwards, figure eight in the frontal plane. And as you can see, they've got a bit of a different aesthetic here. Something is a little bit off. And yeah, so you can use them to create slightly different feelings. And I just wanted to give you that to kind of open up your perspectives, I guess. Okay, that was point number one that I wanted to make, was to give you an upwards, upwards, figure eight slash. Now I want to just alter um, your perspective on patterns, right? So I've just introduced you a new pattern. We can also introduce pattern breaks or pa pattern alterations, right? So we have our our um, uh, frontal plane, I'm doing down, down right now, but frontal plane figure eight wrist roll. We can break this up a little bit by doing multiple repetitions of the same um, side of our body. I just spoke without thinking because I was using my muscles and not my brain. But um, right, we can do front to back, and then instead of immediately coming behind our body and doing back to front in our downward in our classic right comfortable from video 1.3 downwards downwards figure eight. Right, instead of switching front of my body behind my body, one wrist roll, one wrist roll, one wrist roll behind one wrist roll, front one wrist roll behind one wrist roll. We can instead come in front of our body one two behind one two, front one, two, behind one, two. And as you can see, that gives a different feeling. How do you do that? Well, really we're using all four wrist rolls that we have learned. So in front of our body, the nice comfortable prep swing, right outside to in, crotch to chest, not choice for swinging. Um, outside to in, right in the front grip, so front to back wrist roll. From there, instead of slashing back behind your body, now immediately, instead of doing that, continue that momentum front to back wrist roll. See that flop right there, this upwards flop? Turn that into your back to back, okay? So front to back, back to back. This is the exact same thing as the beginning of the back to back uh, wrist roll video, which I believe was 1.4, should have been. Yeah, I think so, right? 
maybe it was 1.5. I think it was 1.4 and then 1.5 was front to fronts, not entirely sure, but you can go back and check. Right, so in front of your body, front grip, front to back, back to back. Now slash behind your body, did you see that extra flop? Use that as your slashing momentum to come back behind yourself. And now behind ourselves, this one's maybe a little tricky to see, um, but, all right, so we slash behind ourselves, I'm in a back grip, I'm going to do back to front, and from there, front to front. Hardest part will probably be the front to front behind your body. So I'll, I'll cater to the right-handed people again. We do our front to back, back to back in front of our body, slash behind you, and as you come towards your butt, for, in your back grip, right, that is your back to front. And maybe just stand here for a minute and practice and keep resetting front to fronts, but behind you, right? Shoulders are more or less facing in the opposite direction um, compared to where the nunchucks are, right? Nunchucks are back here, but like my body wants to be facing this way. My feet are pointing this way instead of that way, right? A complete 180. So practice the uh, front to front wristle back here. Now you might notice that you're not able to right, completely keep your shoulders square this way while you're doing stuff with one arm behind you. That's just because right, nobody can stand completely perfectly square and then take their forearm and rotate it all the way back here without having the shoulder turn like I just did. And that's fine. Um, but anyway, practice as best as you can the front to front behind you. And you don't have to connect multiple into one another because that's not what we're doing yet. But ideally you should also be able to, right? So front to front, reset, front to front. And then try holding in back grip, back to front, front to front. And then come back in front of your body and continue. Okay, so that's a recap, that entire thing in front of your body, starting in front grip, front to back, back to back, slashing to the back of your body, back to front, front to front. When you do it a little bit faster, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Maybe I'll show you in my dominant hand. So this is this way with our one, two, one, two rhythm instead of our one, 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 one. Let's change it up. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I hope you can see how that gives a different vibe. Um, and maybe shake things up a little bit. It's a more stop and go, right? Stop, go, stop, go, stop, go, as opposed to go, 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 right? This continuous flowing motion instead. So uh, that's the second thing that I wanted to show you. You can break up rhythms by um, stopping your connecting motions and instead just doing a repeated, repeated motion. It's not actually the exact same thing, right? It's not like we're doing front to back, front to back, because we're doing front to back, back to back. It's not like we're behind us doing uh, back to front, back to front, because we're really doing back to front, front to front, right? So it's not the exact same thing, but it's in the same point in space. These two wrist rolls, one, two, and these two wrist rolls, one, two. So it looks like you have little repeating segments. It's kind of cool. Anyway, uh, the last thing, I wanted to keep this under 20 minutes. I got a minute and a half left to go. Let's go. Um, so last thing that I want to introduce you to is being able to change. Uh, no, it's not. Before we move on. So we have this one, two, one, two. If you think about what we're doing, we're doing our down, down slashing motion. If you're not sure whether we're doing down, down, up, up, deconstruct your wrist rolls so that you're just slashing and then turn to the side and look, I'm coming down, 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 down. Ideally, if we really have mastery over these wrist rolls, we should be able to do this exact same thing. One, two, one, two, in up, up. And that's what I just did there. So try to figure that out on your own, but I'm going to walk you through it now. Uh, start in, still in a front grip. This time, instead of coming out to in in front of our body, we're going to come in to out and come behind our body. All right, so in to out in a front grip that'll allow us to do a front to back wrist roll behind us. From there, back to back. Slash in front of your body, back to front, front to front. Again, from your center line, swing outwards and behind you. 
shoom, front to back, back to back, slash back in front of you, back to front, front to front. And it'll look like computer's asleep. And it'll look like this. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Okay, so now we have our figure eights down and up in a one, one rhythm and in a one, two, one, two rhythm. Okay, so we've shaken things up a bit. Get good with these on both hands. I realize that I just showed the last one in my right hand, but trying to keep this, no, we're already over 20 minutes. Okay, I guess I'll show this hand too, but um, for right-handed people, right, start on your center line, swing back and behind you, starting in front grip. Front to back, back to back. Come back in front of you, back to front, front to front. Again, front to back, back to back. That's behind you, in front of you. Back to front, front to front. And now we have everything. Everything, right? There are more ways to play with this, but I'm giving you some, okay? I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. Switching directions um, between our wrist rules. And what we're doing here is right now I'm coming down, down. If I slow it down and I come in front of my body so you can see, down, down, down. Speed it up again, make it frontal again. I can switch direct, I can add in the wrist rolls again so I'm not just slashing. And switch. Now I'm coming up, up. And I'll slow it down so you can see, and there you go. How do we do that? We beat under same side arm. This is very, very similar to under same side shoulder pass from I think it was video 1.7, maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, but anyways. Right, start slashing, beat under same side armpit, continue slashing, and now you're slashing up and up. Again, so I'm slashing down, down, beat under same side armpit. Use that as a redirect, okay? So if the nunchucks hit my arm now, if my nunchucks are swinging from in front of me to behind me, and then they hit my arm, after they hit my arm, then I'll switch uh, swinging from behind me to in front of me, right? So anytime that you bounce off a point in your body, the nunchucks will switch directions. So same thing here, slashing, I'll show you in your right hand, down, down, feet under same side armpit, up, up. We can do the same thing with wrist rolls. So let's just start in front of our body, first of all, slash down, down. Now add in your regular figure eight wrist rolls. At a certain point when you're comfortable, beat under same side armpit. So this is in a front grip, right? So I'll wait for that card to leave. Okay. Cross the opposite, back to same and wrist roll. Right, so we do a front to back, a back to front. When we're in this front grip, we beat under same side. And that propels us into, or switches us rather, into up, up, and then we can do our up, up wrist rolls. At first, just probably do your down, down wrist roll, beat underneath, and start slashing up, up. From there, start adding in your up, up wrist rolls instead of trying to just come from down, down figure eights directly into up, up figure eights. That's a little bit difficult. Okay, and there you go. Those are the points that I wanted to bring up. Um, so to recap, we learned, first of all, that instead of just these down-down figure eights, whether they're sagittal or frontal, we can come into up-up figure eights instead, sagittal or frontal. We also learned that we don't have to do one wrist roll in front, one wrist roll behind. One wrist roll in front, one wrist roll behind. We can instead come one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and break up rhythm. Lastly, we learned how to switch directions from one into another. Beat under, same side armpit. Uh, I didn't show you that on the frontal plane, I guess, but we're still beating under, same side armpit. Uh, so let's say I'm in my down, down wrist roll, frontal plane. Behind my body, I beat under, same side armpit. Looks like this. Beat under, same side armpit after the back to front, back to front, under same side. Now I'm in my up, up wrist roll. In front of your body, 
uh, same thing. Let's say that we're, no. In front of our body, it would be a transition from up, up wrist rolls, be under same side arm fit to down, down wrist rolls. Okay? And those are always out of front grip for the switches that I'm showing you today. And there you go, so those three concepts. What are up, up wrist rolls? How can we break up the rhythm of figure eight wrist rolls? And can we switch quickly from one to the other? Flail in frontal plane, down, down. And behind your back, switch hands. So that as we come down, let your wrist roll over. Kind of like we're gonna beat under same side armpit, but it's lower, it's down here. Roll over and catch in the new hand. From there, we're swinging up, up now. It's a pretty nice flow from one to the other. We are, it's basically just this. Okay. That's basically all that we're doing is this kind of tail wag swing, but we're switching hands. That's it, like a pendulum, except it's out of a slash. And then we come into a new slash. And if you take a look at those slashes, the first one was down, down. The second one is up, up. Where do you think I'm going with this? We've always evolved slashes into wrist rolls. That's what we're going to do. So we do our regular down, down, figure eight wrist roll. I come behind my back into the new hand. You can start slashing with the new hand and then come into wrist rolls. So with that in mind, we should theoretically be able to just straight from one hand into the other, back to front, front to back in the new hand, right? I'm in a back grip. Sorry, this hand. Okay, I'm in a back grip. Back to front, catch in a front grip, front to back. Try that a couple times and then connect your regular down, down wrist roll. Now into up ups on the other side. With that in mind, you should be able to do all of this that I'm showing you, right? Our one, one rhythm, switch direction, still one, one rhythm, now down, down with the second hand and up, up with the initial hand. And then lastly, our one, two rhythm, still switch hands, one, two, one, two. Change directions, now a down, down, one, two with hand B and an up, up, one, two with hand A.